I'm going to show you guys how to jailbreak an iPod Touch, the version 1.1.3. There are a lot of available options for ways to do this, but not all options will give you the full functionality of the app pack and the new firmware. And some of them will put iPhone features on your iPod Touch that are useless, and most of them are actually pretty annoying. So what this is going to require is... Uh, as you can see right here, I have an, I, an iPod Touch running 1.1.3. See, you can move the icons around. Uh, stop that. And then anybody who's still a skeptic, I will show you my about screen. There it is, 1.1.3. And uh, unfortunately, I will not be doing this on my iPod at the same time as I'm going to be doing the tutorial because I just worked through this whole thing and I don't want to do it again. So what you're going to need is either a jailbroken iPod on 1.1.1 or one on 1.1.2. And how that works is I'm going to post some links in the comments section and you can download those firmwares and now I'll show you how to restore your iPod to those firmwares. Okay, now I'm just going to assume you maybe don't have a 1.1.2 or one jailbroken iPod if you do, you could skip this next part because this is just going to show them how to refresh their iPod to factory restore. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your iPod uh, and you're going to hold down both the home and the power button for some length of time. And then the Apple logo is going to come up and you can release the power button, keep holding the home button, and it will enter into restore mode, which will be a plug going into uh, an iTunes logo. At that point, you can plug your iPod into your computer with the USB port. Uh, iTunes will recognize it. You can click on your iPod over here, and you'll get a screen that will probably prompt you to update. It will tell you that your iPod is in restore. You will shift, hold shift and click on the word restore, and then you could restore using one of the firmwares that will be in the comments section of this video. Uh, make sure you do not restore to 1.1.3 because that won't work and you'll get screwed in the end. If you have an old jailbroken iPod with either customized or categories enabled, uh, make sure you unhide all apps you may have hidden with either of those two programs because once you jailbreak they might not work or you could just find yourself in a position where you won't be able to view those apps anymore. So just make sure no, no apps are hidden going into this. And if you want, uh, I don't have much experience with this, you could also back up your applications folder using SSH. Uh, those of you who don't know how to do it, I'm not going to go into detail about that. But you could back up your entire applications folder and then restore some of it after you jailbreak again. So what you're, what you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to go to cree.hins.net, which is Nate True's homepage. And you're going to download the way he uses to jailbreak an iPhone, which is this program called iBricker. Uh, so go ahead and download that. Then you're going to open it up. Uh, let me see if I can show you what it looks like. You're going to open the folder. If you're on Windows, run the iBricker.exe. It'll show you welcome to iBricker. And uh, at this point, you're probably scared of bricking your phone, but you won't. It's going to say, check my phone. Uh, if you have any of those two jailbroken firmwares, you'll be okay. And then you can follow the on-screen instructions. They're pretty self-explanatory. It may take a while. It, it could take upwards of 30 minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. Now, at this point, you should have run iBricker, and you are now going to boot up your new iPod. Uh, it won't have as much stuff as mine as at the moment. It'll just have the default apps and installer.app. So you click on installer. Uh, wait for it to load. You're going to go to install, all packages, and then what you will have is 1.1.3 soft upgrade. And you're going to need to install this. Now this could take a while. Uh, I guess it varies on how long it will take for each person, but you're going to want to install this and it might take a while to boot. Now once you boot up after doing the 1.1.3 soft upgrade, you will be running jailbroken iPod Touch 1.1.3. The only problem is you do not have the app pack and you don't have the ability to change the icons and all that cool stuff. So that's what we're going to do now. 
what you want to do is you're going to go to installer and you're going to download two packages one of which is BSD subsystem and the other is open SSH so you could SSH into your iPod some people report that SSH doesn't work uh, work totally when after downloading it so they have a patch called the 1.1.3 open SSH fix and you could download that if necessary now that you've got your 1.1.3 firmware unlocked you're gonna wanna get all the cool apps so what you're gonna do is SSH into your iPod using open SSH uh, you're going to go to the directory system, library, core services, springboard.app and download the link in the description of my video for the the plist file which is uh, n45a.plist and what you're going to want to do is you're going to find the current plist that you have and back that up, rename it like I did n45aplist.old or something to that effect and then you're going to copy in the new plist file and that will uh, give you all of the iPhone features. It will essentially make your iPod be recognized as an iPhone. Last thing before we move on is that some people have reported problems with the Mail app uh, after completing this process. So there is something in the installer that you can download from the repository http colon backslash backslash sleepers.net slash iPhone repo. That will be in the description as well and they have something called 1.1.3 mail fix which you can download if you're having this problem so now that we've got all the 1.1.3 functionality we're gonna wanna take out some of the stuff that this patch has given the iPod because it's now essentially running I iPhone firmware and a lot of those features are useless so first thing you're gonna do is just go into applications you'll have sms.app and phone.app and you're just gonna outright delete those because they're they're essentially useless so just right click and delete them next what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna fix the system control panel so navigate to applications again preferences.app scroll down and you'll find these two files settings-iphone.plist settings-ipod.plist now what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna switch these two files so right click on iphone.plist rename it something arbitrary then rename settings-ipod.plist settings-iphone.plist and then once that's done rename the arbitrarily named old one to ipod.plist essentially you have to switch the two files just rename them and that will fix your preferences menu finally we're going to deal with the last uh, annoying feature of the iPhone firmware which is the no service icon and the pop-ups that tell you you need to activate so now that we got your control panel restored we're going to want to deal with those annoying features of the iPhone firmware which are the no service icon and the pop-up that tells you you need to activate so to do that you're going to go to system library core services springboard.app whatever your respective language is I'll be using English and you're going to open the file springboard.strings in a text editor. Now this will bring this up over here. And what you're going to do is control F for searching. Whatever you find. That will bring up this searching key. And directly below that will be the string. Here I'll see if I can get a view of that. That will be the string right there. I changed mine to Brenner. You could change yours to whatever you want. And then you can do the same control F for no service. And that will deal with the and just change it to the same thing. And then you'll have your own custom carrier icon. Uh, you could also this way deal with that annoying pop-up that's gonna tell you to activate. You can't remove it, but if you control F the text of that pop-up, you'll be able to edit the strings for that as well. And maybe you can change it to something a little less annoying. So if you've done everything right and you're still with me up until this point, you should have a fully functioning uh, all the app pack, all the new firmware upgrades, uh, iPod Touch, without uh, any of the annoying iPhone features, uh, save for that activation notice, which is annoying or maybe not so annoying if you have fun with it like I did. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and remember guys, uh, I put a lot of work into this, so you can donate to my PayPal at don't donate to me at donate.com